your open source advocate and I'm back. I've got kind of a mini video for you this week on something that I really find super useful. This is a great, great tool. It's really awesome. I wanted to tell you about it. Um, it's a text expander and it's written in Rust, as you can see, which a lot of people are just really crazy about things written in Rust lately. I'm not super familiar with the language, but from what I understand, it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty efficient as, as far as the way that it works. So if you're not familiar with text expanders, they're really great tools if you're someone who has to write a lot of things that are repetitive. So for instance, in my job as a product manager, I write development stories for developers so that they know what I'm trying to get them to build. It's how I explain to them what I want out of the software and how I want the software to function. So my stories usually go something like, as a this type of user, I need this software to do this thing so that it's easier for me because of XYZ. So for example, I might say, as a normal computer user, I need a text expansion tool that will let me type in a few characters and then expand that out into a large amount of text that I write repetitively. So. If you do any kind of development or any kind of coding, there's a really great text expander that's built into a lot of the tools um, called Emmet. And it just has rules already kind of built in. And then I think you can go in and kind of create your own snippets and things like that of code. And it makes it much easier. So instead of writing all of these things that are the same every single time you start a new project, you type a few characters that tell it what type of project it's going to be. And it expands out a whole bunch of text. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let me go through it and I'll show you real quick what it what it can do. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you how to install it because it's super fast. The install is really quick. Um, and then we'll get into how to use it. So I'm using Ubuntu, but there is uh, other options. But as you come to the main page here, and I'll, I'll link all these pages on the description and in the show notes. But as you come to the main page, you'll see here, Get Started with Linux, which, which is awesome because this thing is cross-platform and it does work on Linux and it's not something where you have to install like a plugin in the browser to make it work or things like that which is what I've used for a long time. Once you click that you'll come to this page here. Once you come to this page you've got a couple of options. You've got Ubuntu Debian or you've got Manjaro Arch. So basically any version of Arch not just Manjaro. And anything supported by Ubuntu or Debian should be able to run these commands. So this is a large covering of distributions now that doesn't include Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS unfortunately. Um, if you go out to the project site, you may be able to just build it from, from source though. So here we're going to install with a snap. So if there's snap support, you should be able to do this as well. So I'm just going to highlight and copy this right here. I'm just going to go to my terminal. Um, I've got it sized up here a bit and I'm going to paste. And when I paste, I use control shift V like Victor. And you can see what the command is there. So it's sudo snap install espresso, or uh, sorry, esp <laughs> Espanso, that's going to throw me off. I'm going to say espresso every time, I promise. Um, hyphen, hyphen, classic. So sudo snap install espanso hyphen, hyphen, classic. We're going to type in the password there for my sudo user. And it goes through, and this is pretty quick to install. And it's done. Now they tell you back here on the page, when you've got it installed, you can basically just type espanso start to make it start running. So... Okay, let's try. So it tells me xclip is needed to make Espanso start working. sudo apt install xclip. That's all I had to do. sudo apt install xclip. Now if you're on Arch, you'll have to install it the Arch method. And we will clear this and try it again. Espanso start. Spanso must be registered to system D user level first. Do you want uh, do you want to proceed? Yes or no? Well, yes, let's let's get that done. Everything looks like it worked okay. So now apparently if I do colon espanso. Oh there you go. It did it so fast. So colon E S P A N S O. And as soon as I do it, it says hi there. It expands it out to hi there, which is kind of their test to see if it's actually functioning and working. So now, how do you configure Espanso once you actually get everything running? So this is installed. We're done. We did two, two install commands. So let's just cover them again real quick. sudo snap install Espanso hyphen hyphen classic. That's the first one. 
So once you've done this one, then you need to do sudo apt install xclip if you don't already have it. You, you can do this before or after and you can do hyphen y so it doesn't prompt you. And once you've got those two things done, you, you can just do espanso start and it's going to ask you about the systemd thing so that it can run as, as a systemd service. And then to test it, you can just type colon ESPANSO, and it should just pop out. I'm not hitting enter or anything. As soon as I hit O, it's recognizing that word, and it's going to this shortcut. Now, we want to know how to configure this as well so we can use it for our own purposes. All right, so if we want to get to the configuration for Espanso, we're going to go into dot config inside of our home folder. So if you're not already in your home folder, you can do cd tilde slash dot config slash espanso. In here we'll find a file called default.yaml. So D so we can do nano default.yaml. And when you look in here you can see here's the espanso command that we tried right at first and where it said hi there. And there's a couple of others that are already set up. So there's one that says date and then there's one down here that says shell. So if we want to get out of this we can just try those. So colon date and you see it expands out to the date given month, day, and year. You can change that inside of this default YAML. So if we do, we can go in here, and that just does my date, and it comes down here to the format. So let's say that you prefer the year to be first. You can do percent capital Y slash, save that. And now if I do colon date, you see you get the year first. So you can kind of adjust this. Now we've also got colon shell, and you see hello from your shell. So again, you can change those those things, but we want to actually create our own. Um, we want to create our own expansions. So now we can also use a special key to get into that same file. So if you just type espanso edit, it's going to open up the file that you want to edit for your configs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here below the configs that they've already got and we're going to create our own. And you want to be really careful whenever you're doing a YAML that you use the correct spacing. So we're going to call this, um, I don't know, let's call this uh, YouTube description. And we're going to give this a trigger of colon yt description because that's nothing I should ever be typing other than to do this and we're gonna put this as replace now to do multiple lines I think you have to do a few extra things probably and have some special characters in there but we'll kind of check this out whenever we're ready so first we're just gonna put a quote of links and then quote and let's just see if that works because this is what I start to type in for YouTube every time so what I want to do is actually get a multi-line setup here we're going to do control O and save uh, we're going to put one extra character one extra line return there X and it says Damon started correctly, so it restarted it automatically whenever we left. That's kind of nice. But if you don't, if you do it a different way, you want to do a Spanso restart. There we go. Damon started correctly. So now we should be able to do colon YT description, and you see it jumps and it says links. So we're slowly getting there with our expansion text that we want to have. Now, again, when you do these things all the time, and especially like me, you want to make sure you get the exact thing you want and make sure that it's really easy to use. So if you're a developer, if you're somebody like that who's trying to build in some expansion text, if you're a writer, if you're somebody who writes stories and you have formats over and over and over, you know, really learn how to use these tools, and they're going to be the best things you've ever learned how to use. So one thing that you do see is that whenever I do the backspace, it comes back and it shows me the actual command that I typed. If you don't like that, you can go in and set that to false so that it won't actually undo what you did. So basically backspace doesn't undo, so it reverts the expansion and shows you the, the command you typed. I kind of like that. I prefer that because if I type the wrong one, I don't have to go erase a whole bunch of text and then type the right one. Um, maybe you want to type something in and you just wanted to backspace and fix something that's in that actual expanded text. And if that's the case, then you want to change this to false.
So here you can see we use the backslash n to give a new line so that this is their example. So we're going to try that. So we're going to go in and we're just going to do again span. So edit. We're going to go down to our entry here. And I'm going to say uh, backslash n, backslash n, and then equals. And I don't think I should put a space there. And time stamp. There we go. So we've still got our extra line at the bottom. So we'll just save it and exit. And it restarted it. So it should just work. And let's open up uh, Joplin and see if it actually works in there. So let's do control or colon YT description. Aha, there we go. So again, my mistake, I did not actually set this up to get restarted. But you can see I've got a space here and that's because I actually typed in a space on most of these lines. That's easy to fix. So if you see mistakes, again, take the time to go back and actually fix it. Don't edit it every single time you type in that shortcut. So when I go down here, you see that I've got these spaces. So those backslash ends, you don't need spaces between them and the thing previous or the thing after. And that will help save you a lot of effort. Now here it says that it restarts the daemon, but we actually want to do spanso restart just to make sure that it actually takes effect. And we can go back to Joplin here. And I know this is really small text. There we go. So when I type that in, it goes and grabs the information that I want and it starts creating my template, which is great. This is what I've been, this is something that makes it really easy for me to do a job. And this makes it really easy for me to set things up the way that I want. So I can go in and actually just fill in all of this stuff and then I can use that shortcut anytime that I'm typing in the description text inside of YouTube and it's going to fill in all of this standardized text that I use all the time and then really I just have to fill in the links and the timestamps that are different each time. So very cool. So this is a span. So like I said, these are really great tools whenever you get them working and, and, and you start getting them set up and, and really useful for you and you start recognizing where do I type the same things over and over and over. If you have long commands that you're typing over and over and over all the time, this is a great tool to make it really easy. Now you can set up things in the shell already to be shortcuts for your commands, but this is a tool that lets you do that, not just in the terminal, not just in the shell, but kind of on anything on, on your system. And it runs in Linux and it's cross-platform, so it runs Windows. I'm guessing it runs Mac OS X as well. This is a really cool tool. I like it. And the, and the cool thing is, once you move this to, to a cross-platform system, I imagine you can take this default.yaml and just copy it from one system to the next. So you set it up on one system and get it working, copy it to your next system or your next system, or put it out there in a shared location like on Dropbox or NextCloud or, or anything else. And you've got it in a place where your system can access that file and now you've got this amazing tool set that you're using across systems. So I hope this is useful to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who's been supporting my channel. I want to say thank you for subscribing. I really, really appreciate that. I hope you get a lot of these videos. Thank you to the people over at Patreon and the guys over at Patreon that are supporting me. I truly, truly appreciate that. I don't know that I could ever tell you how much I appreciate it, but I really do. And thank you to everybody who asks me questions and interacts with me all the time. It really, really makes it so great to have that interaction with you guys. I try to answer your questions the best I can. I don't know everything. I'll be the first one to tell you right now I don't know everything. But I'll try to answer your questions. If I can, I'll try to point you in a direction that will help you get an answer. So I'm really happy that you guys are getting a lot out of this. I hope you'll continue to do that. And I really appreciate everything you're doing to support me. If you like this, like subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.